Yeah, you know what time it is. Disclaimer, I am not an attorney, nor do I offer or give legal advice. So please understand that all information that we talk about in any of my webinars are strictly information and educational purposes. And most of it is just personal experiences with things anyway. So please understand this is not legal advice. And may you be blessed on your journey to find your power within these laws. Peace and blessings. Welcome back for another round. Yes, we have another round. Now, typically, I always try to show how to be proactive in these situations of dealing with these third party uh, debt collectors. Well, sometimes they like to overstep their boundaries. And when they do that, there are certain steps we can also take. And that's what I'm showing here with this third party debt collection uh, information that I'm showing you right here on the screen. So if you're interested in this and how we really deep dive deep into this, uh, this is where you can go and get that. Now, uh, with this uh, video right here. This particular entity decided to go ahead and file a lawsuit right after they've already received a notice to, to validate the debt. And since they continue to proceed, now they just made it worse for themselves. And let's go ahead and get to it so I can show you. Here we have a plaintiff's notice of non suit. The plaintiff in this situation was recorded as discover bank but it really wasn't discover bank it was a third party debt collector the wicker and associates pc okay a law firm engaged in debt collection all right now they filed suit but something happened because now they're saying something different discover bank plaintiffs files this notice of non-suit and would show the court that it no longer wishes to pursue its claim in this matter this non-suit is effective from the date of filing respectfully submitted all right you see the law firm right there and they got a list of all their little attorneys here right now ask yourself how do we get to this point what happened why they don't want to sue no more well let's get into that all right now on november 16th 2022 Zwick, Zwicker and Associates, PC, Attorneys at Law, this address, 80 Minutemen <laughs> Road, okay, Andover, what's that, Massachusetts, all right, that's their phone number, the website right here, you know, it's a typical language, right, you know, they're letting you know that they are a debt collector, right, they are trying to collect a debt that you owe to Discover Bank, <laughs> we will use any information you give us to help collect the debt. See, they, they start off wrong, all right. See, they say you owe. They automatically saying that you're guilty, right? How are you going to tell me what's going on in my business? How do you even have access to my information? I don't even know you, dude, right? So here we go. Same typical stuff. This is where it all started, though, right? They sent me notice back in November, all right, as you can see here. And then now let me show you through the process of how we always go. We just keep scrolling boom they got notice right i responded to them on this date okay and i addressed randy nelson because he was doing business as Zwicker and associates pc at this address all right we responded as i told you before in the previous video same stuff this is the stuff in action all right now with this situation after I sent them notice, they never responded back. Instead, they decided to break the law, right? Now, here's the, the NMLS, Consumer Access, shows that they're not even licensed to collect debt in the state of Texas, right? There's their document I sent back to them. And certified mail number we know they received it right because everything has tracking boom yeah they got it okay so why is they playing huh uh-oh huh then they sent this notice all right please take note that the above reference action is set for dismissal <laughs> <laughs> status hearing on 929 
All right, 10 a.m. in person at this address. The following may result in the court's dismissal of the case for want of prosecution. Okay, number one, the parties failed to submit a proposed judgment or dismissal order within 30 days after the court announced a judgment or verdict, or the court received a written notice that the party settled. Two, a return of citation or other filing demonstrating service on a defendant has not been filed on or before the dismissal hearing. Three, plaintiff perfected service on a defendant. Defendant has not filed an answer on or before the dismissal hearing and plaintiff fails to file a motion for default judgment. Four, failure to prosecute the case with due diligence. Now they're saying uh, failure to appear at this hearing may result in the dismissal of this matter for want of persecution pursuant to Texas Rules of Civil Procedures 165A in the court's inherent power. Okay, then you have the judge's name stamped there, typed there, whatever you want to say. The show isn't a signature, but anyway. So they're letting them know, hey man, some got to give, but we're going to go on and get rid of this. All right, now you see the date on that, right? All the way to August august 9th you see what date everything really started off like i said they never responded to me they just went and filed a lawsuit i never stepped foot in the courtroom i never responded i never even was served but i knew that there was a lawsuit because i started receiving uh letters in the mail right from attorneys trying to rep wanting to uh get in the game and represent me so what did i do i reached out to them through the trust and let's get to the next part all right all right now we are on after a little Google search, pull up the case number. We got the trellis. It's going to pull up the case so we can view it. So you can see that it's an actual case that was filed, right? And got all the documentation on them filing this case. You know, this BS case, all right? They're playing games in the court and <laughs> they be handled accordingly, all right? So you notice that this was filed by. Olu Wat to to soy to soy something like that. I'm assuming this is a Nigerian name. Uh, this attorney here, J. Thomas Esquire. All right. Notice it's a different name from the name that I addressed in my original documentation. Because there'd be so many of them in these little law firms, and they just be quick to try to, you know, they're all money hungry. That's all. They're just trying to get a dollar, right? Even though it's not lawful, they're trying to do it anyway. All right. Now let's get on to the next part. All right, now I'm going to briefly show you some of the documentation that was sent to the attorneys directly. And uh, we never filed anything on the case with this, never even responded, okay, to the case. We respond directly to the third party debt collector strictly from the trust. And this is how it pretty much starts off right here. Okay, we put them on notice. We put all these other parties on notice as well. Okay, now notice some of the things we're saying, like right here, um, you know, they're not authorized to conduct business all right in the state of Texas, especially on no debt collection. That's the first part we're really addressing right here. Okay, now I'm not going to get into all of this documentation. I'm just going to scan over to show you if you are interested in this, you can reach out to my website and I have a whole course where we go over all of this but I'm just showing you that this stuff is real it's in effect it's active information you see what I'm saying stuff that we're actually done and continuing to do all right so if this interests you go ahead and go to that link and you can uh, get access to this type of information now please understand that we are operating in a very high capacity as far as operating in trust so if you're not already established as a, a solid effective properly structured trust you can still do some of these things but i just can't really guarantee these same results okay now here we go right here first hand knowledge by way of affidavit and sworn declaration under the penalty of perjury that you, Zickwicker and Associates PC, an example third party fully understand, a claimant may enforce a lien only if the claimant has been given preliminary notice with proof of service. Okay? All right, first hand knowledge by way of affidavit, sworn declaration under the penalty of perjury. See, they're not going to attest to none of these things that they're claiming under the penalty of perjury. Why? Because they don't have first hand information. And their whole situation is fraudulent to begin with. Okay, there is no debt. All right, there is no money. 
right? Everything we use in America is commerce, and we're using Federal Reserve notes, which have no backing. All right, look, here we go. Another little part of it. Any proceeds in the above, any proceedings in the above case, including the resale of this alleged debt information for the purposes of collection by any other debt slash collector company that are taken without first timely responding to this notice by the parties will be deemed prima facie evidence of fraud by mail and racketeering and a full scale Federal Trade Commission compliance investigation will take place against the parties, third party debt collector slash intervener, Zigwicker and Associates, PC, ETL issuer. What? Discover Bank. It's agents, assigns, principles, and counsel. Silence is acquiescence. Acquiescence is estoppels. All right. Now we're hitting them with this FDIC. Gives you 30 days to validate this alleged debt. Okay. So they can't validate it. Why? Because it don't exist. All right. Now, uh, as I was saying before, I'm just scanning through this information so that you can see that this is real information that I'm using actively. And if you're interested in this, you can just go ahead and tap in. Here, go to registered mail. Did we send this document to these people? See who we addressed, right? The one who filed the lawsuit. Okay. Boom. That's when, next thing you know, they filing this, right? But now, who filed it? She didn't file it. Samantha filed it. <laughs> Samantha said, let me hurry up and get this down there. We don't want no problems, but it's too late. See, because y'all done already jumped out there. All right, so since y'all jumped out there, now what do I got to do? <laughs> Send them an invoice. All right, here we have an invoice here for $2.1 million for the third party violations of infringing upon trust property. Okay, yeah, we're not playing around with these people. We send them an invoice. That's why they hurry up and remove the lawsuit. But regardless, they still owe. Now we become the debt collector. Why? Because we have scheduler fees that are recorded onto the public that lets people know what it's going to be if you want to come over and messing with us. Okay? These businesses operate like business. We have to operate like a business as well. Then they don't want to play. Why? Because they ain't no fun when a rabbit got the gun. All right? Peace and blessings.